and happy new year. I hope everyone had a good Christmas and new year if you um, celebrate it in your part of the world. Um, so welcome back to the Sterling Engine Mark V project, which is uh, going to be a locomotive. Um, the first thing I'd like to say is thank you for all your comments and uh, things on YouTube. It's all it's a great help. Um, I've made a few changes to the design um, off the back of those um, to try and improve the success rate of this uh, this project actually um, working um, when we complete it in uh, hopefully a month month or two's time. Um, so I'll show you what I've been up to the last few weeks then. Right, so this is where the um, design is and. Um, now I'm very, I'm pretty much going to commit and um, and build this. Um, so as you can see, I've um, I've lowered the weight of the uh, design a bit. Um, I've got everything as low as possible and taken the weight off various items. The chimney is shorter and made of smaller diameter material now. Um, as far as the rotating and reciprocating bits, all the linkages I've I've made them as light as um, reasonably po like possible. Um, I could go lighter, I suppose, um, but I'm going to leave them as they are and then see what happens. Uh, somebody pointed out I could actually um, use tube, which would be, make, create a much lighter assembly. Um, some of the aircraft um, aviation tubes and that are extremely light. Um, actually, on the previous, um, on the version one, I did actually incorporate tubes uh, as part of it. Um, so I'll just zoom in. So this is a piece of tube here. And then there was a... Um, uh, like a plate that welds on the end that was going to weld on the end with that and the bearing would sit, sit between that um, because on the current version um, these are quite I mean these short, these linkages are very short they're about uh, about 200 millimeters long or less so so they're not they're not particularly big linkages um, I've lowered the weight a fair bit so hopefully the reciprocating uh, weight won't be too much of a problem um, it's certainly much lighter than the last engine, and the last engine wasn't too bad. Of course, there's only um, the stroke of the engine is only about about two inches long, really. Uh, you can see I've, I've put the gearbox in place here, um, roughly. This is only rough. It, I've, I've only done enough to make sure the thing fits and uh, and everything lines up. Uh, this this um, this thing here will be the uh, well, it'd be, it's going to tension the belt, or it could be used as a clutch um, lever. I'm not sure whether I'm going to need a clutch yet. Um, but I think experimentation would be the best way to work that one out. Um, and then you've got the end view here. And you see the gearbox, the shaft coming out there. So there's a, a pulley there. Um, that will go down to the shaft here. Um, and then you've got the gear, or the sprocket, I should say, that comes off here. And that will go off, go down to the, um, the sprocket mounted on, on the main drive shaft. I've... Um, I've calculated a top speed of um, about two miles per hour, um, but I've got lots of uh, movement to adjust that speed either up or down, depending on how fast the engine goes. Of course, I don't really know that yet until, until I run the thing. Um, I think that's about it as far as design goes. You can see all the various templates that I've prepared um, that I've pulled off of um, the main drawing. Uh, this has become a, quite an endurance this time because there's been quite a few bits really. And um, I like to try and include all these alignment tabs so all the pieces line up. Um, but I'm really getting to the point now. I'm wondering whether I should flip over to a, a 3D, some 3D CAD software, and try and get involved in that because it'll be much easier to pick all this, pick pick the design of pieces to get all these templates out of. Um, it did uh, did cause me a fair bit of stress all this lot. To work out the top speed, I use a simple um, a simple formula within Excel. So here I can input the. Uh, just wait for me camera to focus. Here I can input the um, the various uh, engine speed and first pulley circumferences and all the way to the end, and it will give me a a readout of two miles per hour with my current setting. Um, as I said before, I've left a lot of movement within the uh, gear, uh, be able to swap out pulleys and and get and sprockets and that to to change that speed um, very dramatically me one of the biggest challenges of building this engine was trying to work out the various volumes and that the um because the the diaphragm piston, piston assemblies are a very weird shape they're, they're quite it's quite an endurance to work out the volumes and that each time you change it you've got to you've got to bloom and do a full calculation so what i did was again i made a um i put all the formula within excel um it, it probably this probably wouldn't mean much to a great many people because i've put it in my language 
um, but basically I can work out the um, the tube lamps uh, required um, and all the tube areas and number of tubes and stuff like that. Um, <clears throat> as far as compression ratio goes, um, at the moment, um, the compression ratio is one to two or two to one, um, which is quite high really. Uh, the standard Sterling engines, you want to be looking at a compression ratio of one to 1.5, maybe 1.6, and that would be like an, uh, sort of an average temperature engine like a fire sort of uh, temperature kind of engine um but uh, the good thing with it being too high compression is there might be uh, problems in the design that, that create extra dead space within the engine um and i can also i can decomp um uh, i can uh, lower the compression ratio easy enough by um, getting a shorter crank uh, uh crank uh, crank arm um, but I can actually I can increase it, so that's probably the the best um, best way to come from on that side. Right, uh, right. So this is my this is my parts list. Um, it's quite a few parts to this one because it's an actual locomotive as well. It, it does add add quite a few things to it. Um, it's just uh, it just allows me to keep track of things, so I um, I don't uh, miss them, <laughs> don't forget all of them. Um, yeah. So in total, there's 213 pieces to this project. Uh, not including nuts and bolts. So it's quite a few really compared to previous engines. I have actually started to order some of the materials required. Uh, there were some, um, some decent offers on from various places. So I've taken advantage of those and ordered the uh, some of the bits early. I was going to hold off until I've got the laser cut and um, organized and um, cut. Um, but uh, there you go. Yep, so this is stainless steel tube. This is two inch stainless steel tube. Um, and then there's a bigger mold steel bit there. That'll be the chimney. So I've ordered uh, and received some of the bearings. Um, so you've got these pressed uh, steel flange bearings uh, for the rockers and the crankshaft. Um, some smaller bearings for the various various linkages and stuff like that. I've ordered a few bits of uh, vermiculite uh, insulation. This is high temperature insulation material. Um, I find the vermiculite the uh, the better of the various options available. It's uh, it seems to have a good middle ground between um, um, insulating heat and also being quite structurally sound once it gets hot. Um, I've got another bit there I'm going to use as well. I've got the ceramic board as well. I might use some of this in it, but I don't I don't really like the ceramic board that much. If it gets overheated um, with a fire, it, it does get very fragile. So there you go. That's the progress at the moment. Um, I shall uh, hopefully have all the laser cutting uh, done by the time I next talk to you, which I'm assuming will be a few weeks' time. Um, and I should have ordered all the materials up, so I should have a big pile of stuff to uh, start putting together, and uh, we can really get into the nuts and the bolts of the project. Um, it's been quite a uh, endurance for me because I always like to try and get things done, but um, I've had to hold back and uh, try and get some of the design aspects uh, sorted uh, beforehand. All right, okay then. Well, till till next time. Bye bye.